so we're starting off here on the Make Code Home page. You see a place for new projects and then your old projects that you've made will be following it. There's tutorials for things like the smiley buttons or a dice. Scrolling down, there's even more tutorials for games like rock, paper, scissors, fashion things like a watch or a step counter. Um, I'm gonna go into a code I already wrote called flashing lights. We're gonna take a look at that. I want you to notice refreshing right now on the left side is a micro bit and that is your simulator or emulator. It shows what your code will do on the micro bit. Your workspace where you put your code blocks is to the right. You can refresh by hitting the arrows under the emulator. If you click the bug, it takes you to a debugging program. So it'll help you find problems in your code. Um, you can turn your sound off and on. And if you click the very last button, it will make your micro bit full size. So you can see a, a big version of your micro bit. Here it is running the on start code. If I hit that button, I can go back here. Um, in the middle between the workspace and the simulator are drawers. The drawers have different names based on the types of code blocks in them. Let's take a look inside the basic drawer. You see something like show LED, show icons, show strings, which will scroll um, words across. Um, if I pull out the show LEDs and click it onto my on start code blocks, I'm going to show you what it can do. Clicking on the squares turns lights on and off on your micro bit. And so I'm going to click on enough lights to see a smiley face. Then if I play or refresh my emulator, it's going to say hi, big heart, little heart, and then it will show the smiley face I just made. Going back into basic, um, another button that might be useful to you is this pause button. And I'm going to put a pause between the hearts and the smiley face, and I'm going to change it to how long I want the pause to be, and I'm changing it to two seconds. Now notice that 2000 is the number that shows up. That's because the pause is in milliseconds and 1000 milliseconds equals one second. Let's check out the input drawer. I'm gonna pull out an input button that says on button A pressed. I can change it to on button B pressed or A plus B together at the same time. If you look at the micro bit, button A is on the left and button B is on the right. If I push them at the same time, that's A plus B. I'm gonna move my smiley face so that it will show up when I push on button A. So as my code refreshes, it's gonna play my on start code, high and then the hearts. And then if I push button A, I'll see my smiley face. And it won't go away because I didn't tell it to clear the screen when it was done. So let's pull out another on button A pressed and put it here to the side. And from the drop down menu, I'm gonna change button A to button B. And I'm gonna drag that on start code and, and put it on B instead. So now when the micro bit refreshes, I push B, it's gonna say hi, and then show the hearts. And I'm gonna get rid of my on start button by dragging it to the left and putting it in the trash can. Let's go back into input and take a look at some other ways that we could start a code. I'm gonna pull out the on shake code block and take a look at the drop down menu. I could also, instead of shaking, have logo up or down, screen up or down, tilt left or tilt right, free fall. Those are all ways to start a code being read by the micro bit. Some other things in the input are um, some sensors that are built into the micro bit, rotation, running time, there's a compass. Let's go back to the original input. Um, you can see acceleration, light level, um, temperature, all of those are built in sensors. Let's go into the music drawer now and pull out a play melody code block. We're going to snap that block in where it says on shake and then we're going to click on the rectangles and for each column we can pick a different note that's represented by the different colors. And then we can click done and then we can tap shake on the simulator and see what it sounds like. Okay, so that's our play melody um, music block. So let's get rid of that, drag it over to the left to the trash can, and let's go back into music, and I'm gonna show you how to put in notes. So if you click on the play tone, it starts off at a middle C, but if you click on the middle C, it brings up a keyboard. You can change the note, and you can change how long the beat is for. So I'm gonna change this to two beats. So it'll play the middle G for two beats, and then I'm gonna add another note we're gonna play the middle C and let's also change its beat to two beats. And let's hear what it sounds like if I let it refresh and then click shake. 
Okay, I'm going to drag away those play tones and go back into music. If I scroll down, I can find where it says start melody. Click that in the, to on shake. And from a drop down menu, I have all these different songs that are pre-programmed that I can play. I'm going to choose the entertainer and let's hear it. All right, let's take a look at some of the other drawers. Here in loops, there's a fun button called repeat. So if I, uh, and there's some others too, but let's mostly play with the repeat. If I pull that out and I want to make my heart flash more than one time, I'm gonna put the heartbeats inside the repeat four times. I'm gonna get rid of that pause though, I don't need that. And now when I push button B, I'll see on my simulator, it still says hi one time, but then it's gonna have the heartbeat four times. It's repeating those two buttons in that order four times. I could also change that four to any number I want. So let's say I wanted my heart to beat, oh, I don't know, seven times. And then I hit the um, button B. It still says hi one time. And then it's going to um, flash the heart bigger and smaller seven times. There's some other drawers that have interesting things like the logic drawer has some very useful code blocks that you'll be using for other codes. Variables are when you need to store information. So you would make up the name of a variable like steps or something like that. And it'll give you extra buttons with the variable already inside it. There's some math buttons if you want your micro bit to do some calculations for you. Adding, subtract, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, picking a random number is very useful for some of our codes. And if you click the advanced button, some more um, drawers will pop up. Game is particularly fun, and we're going to be using some game buttons later. Images, if you want to make bigger pictures that would scroll across. Pins are for where we're connecting things to the micro bit, like a servo or like lights. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different things our micro bit will be able to do with this code. When your code is done and you're ready to save it, you're just going to click on the picture of a disk at the bottom and that will save your code to your hard drive or wherever you have your default set. If you click the share button and you already name your code, I'm going to go ahead and put my name there just so when I submit it to the teacher, she knows it's mine. I'm going to publish my code and then it's going to give me a link. Now this link is what I'm going to have to copy and paste so my teacher can see my code. Um, that whole thing right there will take my teacher to the code that I just made. If I just copy what's up there in the browser tab, it takes me to the general make code. You have to click share and publish your project and then copy that link and that's what you submit for your assignments. That way I can see exactly what your code is and we'll be able to run it and check it myself. Have a great time coding. I can't wait to see what you create.